As you work with tables, you may need to periodically insert or remove rows and columns. In this quick tip, I show you four quick ways to perform both tasks and a fifth way to add rows and columns. Let's look at five different ways that you can add and remove rows and columns from your tables. Method number one, using the tools on the layout tab of the ribbon. I'm going to click within this table right here, which makes the layout tab of the ribbon available. All I have to do is select that and you'll notice that right over here in the rows and columns group, you can insert above, you can insert below, or you can click on the delete tool right here and choose to delete rows, columns, or whatever you would like from within your table. That's method number one. Method number two is starts with selecting the row or column. I'm going to go ahead and select this row right in here. And you can see that when I do that, that there is a, a quick menu of options that appears at the uh, top of where I inserted that row. And I can choose insert above or I can choose to insert below or I can choose the delete tools within this menu in order to add or to delete that row. The same thing works if I go ahead and I select a column. You can see that it appears just the same when I selected that column. Method number three is I can backspace, use the backspace key. Once I select a row or column as I've done right here, then I can go ahead and press the backspace key and that entire row or column is deleted from within that table. Method number four is invoked by right clicking on a row or column. If I right click right here, notice that I get the menu up above just like I did a minute ago, but I also get a context menu. And within that context menu, I can choose to delete rows or I can choose to insert uh, rows and columns within uh, my table. And now let's take a, way, a look at the fifth way that you can add rows or columns within your table. Notice that I've placed the insertion pointer within uh, the cell that has the word 18 within it. And if I move the mouse pointer over this table, notice the different behaviors in this mouse pointer as I move it around. If I move it right to the uh, dividing line between the two of them and then move it up, you'll see that I end up with a plus sign right there. And if I click on that plus sign, then it inserted that column between those two. I can do the same thing with uh, rows. All I have to do is keep moving it to the left, right, um, right between these two, and I get that plus sign again. Now some people, I need to tell you, don't like this method of inserting rows and columns, even though it is very handy. If you don't like it, it's the one single method that you can turn off within Word entirely. All you need to do is go and display the Word Options dialog box, and then at the left side of the dialog box, choose Advanced. Scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see a section that says display. Right down here in this display section, you see an option that says show pop-up buttons for adding rows and columns and tables. If you turn that off, then this fifth method of adding rows and columns will not be available within your use of Word. It's entirely up to you whether you like that option or not, but you can delete it if you want to. There you have it five methods to insert rows and columns and four methods to delete them. Which method should you use? It's entirely up to you and how you want to work with your tables. In other words, use a method with which you are most comfortable. If you enjoyed this quick tip, click the subscribe button below and click the bell icon. That way YouTube will let you know whenever a new video is added to the Word Tips channel. Thanks for spending a few moments with me today.